I just think that if you're fat and you go to the doctor and they tell you that weight loss is going to improve the condition that you actually came in complaining about, and they can't immediately explain how weight loss will improve your condition in five sentences or less, um, a trap door should open underneath them and deposit them into a pit of flames. All passion, no thought. These people are literally working with like smooth brains to an upteenth degree. I almost can't believe sometimes the amount of like stupidity these people emanate off their bodies. It's actually insane that people have actually made it to like the age of 30 or 40 with this type of knowledge or whatever. And you know what? It would be one thing if they were just saying this to their friends and family, but to post on the internet is like the chef's kiss of stupidity. But there are plenty of people in her comment section saying, yes, queen, 100%, you are totes right, 100%. Open that trap door, d put them right into that Rancor pit. D RP as Luke Skywalker, yes, queen, 100%. It's like these people just don't understand that if like you walk in with multiple conditions, a lot of that stuff could be attributed to you being weighted up. Or even if it doesn't, like for instance, you go in there with a broken arm, sure, that might not necessarily have anything to do with your weight. It could, but it might not. But that doesn't mean that the doctor isn't obliged to tell you that your weight is a major issue, which it is. You're blank as hell. You're ginormous. And by the way, if you fell down on your arms, do you think your arms have the structural capacity to really hold up the sheer amount of girth that you have? You know how many times I've seen fat people on the floor that literally physically cannot get up off the floor? And I'm not even talking about people that are like 60, 70, 80 years old that literally can't get up off the floor anymore because if they do, like they're, it's done for them. They need help. Like I've fallen and I can't get up. But if you're fat and you're like 32 and you can't get up off the floor, that's terrible. That's not good at all. If you need other people to assist you getting up off the floor at your, your 32 years old and it's only because you're fat, that's an issue. That's not good, okay? You're relatively young. 32 is very, very young and you can't get up on the floor anymore, that's a problem. So yes, I understand what you're saying, but simultaneously, can we just talk about this for just one second? The weight is gonna have a major issue to do to your health, but go off queen, go ahead, man. Go ahead, tell us about how terrible we are for assuming that weight has any issue at all. I don't know why the five sentences or less could, is like the prerequisite to judge whether or not this doctor is dumb or stupid. It's like a lot of these people, and have you gone to medical school for six, seven, eight, nine, ten years? Have you practiced medicine on multiple people? Do you have the expertise in order to like judge this adequately? How the hell do you know any of this shit? And like, these people really do think that they're, they know more than doctors. Like they'll sit there and say like, this doctor has no idea what they're talking about. I remember we were watching a video not too long ago, that guy that sat there and said like, the doctor told me that I was on the brink of having a literal entire stroke. But you know, that doctor doesn't know what he's talking about. Like, what are you talking about, dude? Like, that's crazy. Stop, stop. It's the same shit here. Like, what are you talking about? How do you know that? Like this doctor is telling you some real truth and you're just like, nah. Five sentences or less, um, a trap door should open underneath them and deposit them into a pit of flames. If the doctor, no other reason than that, beautiful doctor's office really gave a shit about fat people, then why don't they carry cuffs for blood pressure that fit my arm? Let me tell you something, okay? For a really long time, and even up to this time, uh, where I am in my life, uh, for I didn't. I had to use the child's, the child's uh, wrist around that because my arms are really small, right? I have, I have really, really thin wrists, really, really thin wrists, right? And my biceps have gotten bigger over time, of course, because after lifting weights, I've now, since then, I've been into a weighted category where I can actually use adult braces and stuff like that. But for a long time, I just didn't have the option. And they would go in because I'm an adult and they would assume that because I'm an adult that I would need the adult strap, but I didn't. So they would come in and they would go, oh, this doesn't fit you. And I'd go, oh yeah, I know I have this problem a lot. And then they would have to go leave for a few minutes and come back with a child one and wrap it around my wrist. Now, listen, sure. It's a little bit embarrassing, but simultaneously, what the fuck am I going to do about it, bro? It's like, I'm a thin dude. I'm a smaller guy. It's obvious that this is going to have to be something that's I'm going to have to assume that's going to happen. Right. But these people, for some reason, they all automatically assume that they need to be catered to regardless of how extreme their bodies are. It's almost as if these people don't realize that they are in a crazy, ridiculous, out of the ordinary category. You are in the exception. You are not the rule. Now, granted, you could hundred percent say, oh, well, 70% of women in America are blank. Sure, 100%. 70% of women in America are blank. How many of those people are going to the doctor? You know, we literally see so many times that these people literally saying, I go to the doctor and I walk out because these people want to weigh me and I don't want to be weighed. I don't want to have my blood pressure checked because if I do, then that's fat phobia. So if you're sitting here and you're complaining about this, you got to look in the mirror. You guys are literally advocating for your own destruction while claiming you guys don't have adequate people that are around you or like equipment when you guys don't go in. Why don't they have chairs in their doctor's office that fit larger bodies? Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something real quick. 
do you want us to like remodel the entire idea of our buildings? Like just everything, every piece of furniture, man, no matter where we are or what we're doing, that needs to be remodeled to better fit fatter people. You do realize a lot of these doctor's offices have been up and running for 50, 60, 70 years, and they don't really get a lot of new shit. And when they do get a lot of new shit, it's not very often. So when you ask for bigger chairs, you do realize it's not something as simple as like, oh, well, let's just hit up management and just replace all the chairs that we probably spent thousands of dollars on hundreds of thousands of dollars. I mean, some, some, some hospitals are massive. Let's just replace all those chairs, sell them off or whatever, and buy new chairs that are about 20% wider that don't have armrests, even though fat people, uh, sorry, even though older people need the armrest to get themselves up out of the chair, let's just 20%, 30% bigger on all of them. Structural capacity, make them thicker, stronger. It's going to be more expensive, 100%, but guess what? We're doing it for the care of these people. Do you see how unreasonable that is? Why don't they have a scale in their office to weigh larger bodies? How fat are you? <laughs> Damn, them scales usually do go up pretty high, don't they? Like 300 pounds in some case? Uh, wh how big are you? Mostly the scales nowadays, like, I don't get scaled in the office. You usually get scaled, like, before you go into the, the main, before you go into your main room, there's usually a scale. Most of the time it's digital now. Most scales nowadays don't have that, like, little, you know what I'm talking about, that thing where they have to find out the exact measurement. Now, most of them nowadays are just digital. You just sit on them or you, you, you put your feet on them and they go, okay, this is how much you weigh and then you walk in. Most of the time it's like that. So, if you're so fat, and these scales are big as fuck, like, these are massive ass scales. Big ass metal, big ass metal like sheets and a ginormous like structural compatible big thick big thick pieces and you're sitting here talking about some why don't they have scales big enough for you how fat are you you gotta be big as shit if you over here complaining about that why don't they have hospital gowns that fit larger bodies yeah yeah listen how big are you we gotta take a second dude you, you gotta be massive i mean that's crazy as hell bro have you seen these hospital gowns that didn't fit somebody are you crazy how big are you, bro? You, you, you got to be in a different level of obesity if you're sitting here complaining about the hospital gowns not fitting. Those things are massive. Those things are literally the size of bed sheets, bro. I've been around people that have been in the doctors before with those hospital gowns. You're big as hell if that's the case, man. I got to keep it a buck. Now, listen, it's fine if you want to complain about this shit, but I think you got other things to complain about. You're big as hell. That's, you you got to be massive if the hospital gowns don't fit you, bro. Jesus Christ. And you're over here complaining about that. You should be complaining about the stairs. You should be complaining about gravity. You should be complaining to yourself in the mirror. Look at yourself in the mirror and go, hospital gowns don't fit me. Chairs are not big enough. The, the scale at the doctor's office is literally incompatible for my size. I can't, it doesn't scale me anymore because I'm too big. And you're sitting here complaining that it's the hospital's fault. When are you going to wake up and realize, hmm, you know, all these things that are affecting me seem like it's only really affecting me. Maybe there's something I can do to alleviate any of these problems at all. You ever think about that? You ever think about maybe one or two of those things? It could have been just like, man, I don't know, the, the diet and exercise a little bit. Just walk around a little bit more. Uh, maybe use utilize your mouth for more talking and less chewing. Because it seems like you got a real issue here. And it seems like you just kind of deduce that that issue is everybody else's problem and not your own. Anyway. If they had our health in their best interest. You're literally out of breath and you said like three sentences. Why do they push weight loss surgery? Most doctors don't push weight loss surgery. Most doctors will prescribe to you diet and exercise flat out. That's obvious. Now, sure, in more extreme cases, they might prescribe to you weight loss surgery, but you gotta be in a very, very, very extreme circumstance to be prescribed weight loss surgery. Now, this just leads me to believe even further that this person is abnormally big. Now, there is obesity, and then there's whatever this is. I don't know how big she is. It's very ambiguous looking upon her right now. She does have a face of an obese person, but then again, simultaneously, I've met a lot of obese people that look big in the face, but when you see them, they're not that big. So. Given what I have from these context clues, I'm going to assume this woman is ginormous. This woman's got to be big as fuck if she's going into the doctors and none of the things fit her. And not even that, the doctor's prescribing her weight loss surgery. You got to be in extreme levels of obesity if that's the case. So you're in a different category. You're not even, you're not even around what most fat people are. And you know, that's really interesting too, is that I hear these people oftentimes 
They'll say the majority of America is fat or the majority of the UK is fat. And that might be true, but you got to understand that there's fat and then there's you. You're not in that same category of blank. Now, if you're sitting here and you wear an XXL, I, you're fat. I'll give you that. Now, if you're sitting here complaining that there isn't a size 26, 27, 28, 29, 40, then you're in a different category. Okay. These are different levels of fatness. You understand what I'm talking about? You're literally the exception, even in the fat category. Interest. If they had our health in their best interest, why do they push weight loss surgery? Because that's just a band-aid. Weight loss surgery is a band-aid? Really? That's interesting as fuck to think of that, that, that weight loss surgery is a band-aid. Are you sure about that? I've never in my life ever heard somebody say weight loss surgery is the band-aid. Okay. Fine, if that's what you want to say. Now, she's probably thinking about it in the sense of like, I still have to put in a lot of work to even maintain this weight loss. Because a lot of people don't know if you get bariatric surgery, you do have to continue with the diet that they prescribe to you. So that means like for the first four or five weeks, you're probably gonna have to like drink a liquid diet. You're not gonna be able to drink any solid or eat any solid foods. And then even post that, you're gonna have to cut things out completely. Like you may not be able to drink alcohol anymore. You're probably not gonna be able to drink sodas anymore. The fuck off on all those high high calorie foods. Those things are gonna just completely destroy your diet depending on what kind of surgery you got. So like, it depends on what you mean by a uh, Band-Aid. Usually when somebody says it's a Band-Aid, it's just a temporary solution. That's a long-term thing. Now, once you get that bariatric surgery, there's no going back. You're just done for the rest of your life. I would never hear somebody say that that's a Band-Aid solution. That's crazy as hell. Weight loss surgery. Because that's just a Band-Aid. As someone who's had weight loss surgery and lost like a shitload of weight and then got... My bad, hold up. Had weight loss surgery and lost... Uh, it's okay. Like a shitload of weight and then got a medical condition that caused me to gain 140 pounds. And it's real tough when I feel, when I see people that get weight loss surgery, a lot of them do lose a lot of weight because there is like a buffer period where your body is like adjusting to the new, whatever surgery that is. And you will lose a lot of weight. I've met many people that have lost a good amount of weight. If you want some examples like a boogie 2988, or if you want to look at another person like wings of redemption, these people have lost a lot of weight, but they still chill at around 400 pounds or even more than that in some cases, because even though these people will sit there and say it's a band-aid solution, they still eat like garbage. They're still sitting there eating undelectable foods, marinating their mouth in just mischief and mustards. Just just absolute monster mashing, diabolical dustations in their mouth consistently, disrespecting the palates. And uh, that's okay if you were just like somebody that was fat as fuck. But once you get that surgery, you do realize that's like irreversible. You do understand that that's like one and done. That's that's done You for the rest of your life. You're fucked. And if you want to continue to eat like shit. Now, I don't know what medical, I don't know what medical condition she got. But I'm going to keep it a buck with you. There's a thing called thermodynamics. And when you're fat. It means you're eating too much. Now, I whatever medical condition that was, maybe it put you in bed. Maybe it consider, maybe it contributed to, to getting Uber Eats or eating a lot of calories or just less energy expenditure. Understandable. But that doesn't mean that you're not contributing to it. That doesn't mean that you're not eating too much. That's something that we got to talk about, dude. It's all, it's always something else. It's always external. It's always, oh, I got this medical condition. Oh, I'm, I'm not in the right environment. Oh, I'm depressed. I'm this, I'm that. And I'm not taking away from any of that stuff. But at some point, we need to understand that this has got to be up to you to solve. Like if somebody was sitting here and they had money issues and then you go through their budget every single month and you realize this person is spending literally hundreds of dollars on streaming services, hundreds of dollars on their phone, hundreds of dollars on cannabis, hundreds of dollars on alcohol, hundreds of dollars on random shit. And they're sitting there going, I don't know why I don't have any money. You don't have any money because you're spending it all. You're spending all your money on just bullshit consistently. So it's one of two things. It's either you up your money or you get on a budget and you spend less. Same thing here. It's either you continue with these bad habits and you get bigger and bigger and bigger and eventually you die, which is fine if that's what you want to do. I mean, I personally don't want you to die, but if that's what you want to do, who am I to tell you? But or you can budget out your calories and understand that there's something that you can do. Now, it's very easy to blame all your problems on external sources because that just means that you don't have to do anything. You just sit there and just coast for the rest of your life. But that only lasts for so long because eventually that's just going to catch up to you. You can't just expect that shit to just go away just because you're not looking at it. No, it doesn't go away. It's just there in the background and slowly but surely compiling and compiling and getting bigger and bigger and eventually 
something's gonna hit the wall and then you're gonna be fucked and you're gonna eventually realize that it's your fault and uh and maybe at that point it might be too late for you to make a change that's why i always suggest if you're gonna lose weight you probably do it as soon as possible because as you get older and as you get as you get older things start to break down more you become it becomes harder and harder to lose weight your body becomes less and less uh, uh what's the word i'm durable so I would just always suggest losing it as soon as possible. But the, a lot of these people don't want to. And then they'll just use the cope of like, well, it's not my fault, which is not true. A medical condition that caused me to gain 140 pounds. And the conditions I had before weight loss surgery actually worsened when I was in the smaller body. Sounds like your fault. They rather push weight loss surgery and just discard you. Just to discard you. Who is discarding who? You do understand when you're an adult, there is nobody looking out for you with the exception of yourself. Like, sure, you can have a wife. Sure, you can have a husband. Sure, you can have family members. But overall, you are the individual within question that, take care of, that takes care of yourself. I don't know if you've made it this far in your life and realized this. If you haven't realized this, maybe your mom's been taking care of you this whole time. But if you need to go to the doctor, who's going to take you to the doctor besides yourself? If you need to go to the grocery store and you're out of food, Who's going to take you to the grocery store beside yourself? Like, you do understand this is all up to you. Now, when you when you say, when you sit there and you go, well, my surgery did this to me and I did that and they just discarded me, what are you even talking about right now? If you don't want to go to the doctor, you don't have to. If you don't want to get the weight loss surgery, you didn't have to. If you didn't put in the research to understand what that weight loss surgery was going to do to you, you didn't have to. Why do you look at everything else as something that is out of your control? You're doing it to yourself. This is a mess. I love it when people just end it like that. I don't like these beads around her neck, by the way. Message for plus size people, fat people, curvy people. Do what you gotta do to protect your mental health. Beat off consistently. Eat copious amounts of ice cream while beating off consistently. Um, marinate your mouth in the liquids of an air conditioner. Just wait outside of an air conditioner like this and just have your mouth just right underneath it. Just let that sweet sensation of that metal drip right into your throat. Do it during this season, this resurgence. I don't know what it is, but those teeth look a lot yellow compared to everything else, I don't know. Of fat phobia. The Victoria's Secret show has really reminded me the reality of where we are as a society. We've lost the plot. <laughs> I agree. 100% I agree. We concern ourselves with things that have absolutely nothing to do with anything. So many people want to be advocates for something, and it seems like everything we're advocating for nowadays is completely just, it's just unfeasible. It doesn't make any sense. Like, maybe 100 years ago, we were advocating for, like, the women's rights to vote or, like, you know, civil rights and stuff like that. But nowadays, we're advocating for things like, I don't know, like you know, being, having more clothes in plus size selections, having bigger seats on airplanes, like having strapless shoes because you can't bend over to tie your own shoes or making rooms bigger. Like you're totally right, but I doubt that's what she's actually looking for. She's probably saying the other thing. We have lost the plot. The plot is lost. There are people who are- I can see where your wig starts, by the way. Making mean comments about Ashley Graham and her walk for the Victoria's Secret show. Mind you, Ashley Graham is the most palatable plus size person. In the I don't know. I don't even understand what she's talking about. Ashley Graham walk on the red carpet. <laughs> Looks uncomfortable. Yeah. Look, there's a lot of like pressure being pushed down on her legs. You know, uh, is she fat? I mean, on the side, I guess I saw a little some extra on the side there. I guess, but uh, yeah. What are we saying about her? Is she just too big or something like that? Seems like everybody in the comment section is saying she looking eye too. Body is T, whatever. <laughs> Body is T is kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't see anything necessarily wrong with her. I don't like the back. Like, what is even these, what is even the purpose of these fashion shows? Is anybody really walking around with wings on their back? Like, who's, who's sitting there going... Who's sitting there, like, as a man? Is this, like, lingerie? I'm guessing this is, like, lingerie. Who, as a man, is going, beep? I was, like, thinking, like, last night, I was, like, on TikTok, and I saw this woman wearing this lingerie, and I thought you could wear it because, like, it had wings, and I thought that was cool. Like, can you dress up as, like, can you just have wings on your back? Like, what guy is out here advocating for his woman to wear lingerie, period? That's already crazy as hell. Most dudes will tell you, I don't want my girlfriend to wear lingerie. I just want her to be naked, so there's that. But then again, maybe it's not, maybe it's not lingerie, okay? Um, but then who's sitting there going, oh, yeah, man. It really turns me on. My girlfriend just wears wings, bro. That shit is, oh, that shit really gets me going, man. Oh, wings on your girlfriend is crazy, dude. It's the equivalent of having a man having the, having the slapper. When a guy walks in, you just hear that. 
against his legs, that's the same thing. If my girlfriend's not wearing wings, I don't want to be with her, man. Oh, what are we even doing nowadays when it comes to these 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 fashion shows? Is this, is this not lingerie? Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, but this doesn't look presentable in any way. She literally just has wings on her back and wearing some weird shit. Like, this looks like, I don't know, like Lucy from Cyberpunk. I don't know, bro. What do you want? Entire world. If you have something mean to say about Ashley Graham, someone who has proven to us time and time again that she is a trained model i i don't really care about ashley graham i'm sure she's a great model she didn't even look like bad in any way i mean she was a little bit over but then again that's probably why she's in the position that she's in it's whatever i'm sure she's very very talented or whatever so i don't really have anything to say besides the fact that she had wings on her back i can only imagine what you'll say about a dark skin I already smell where this is going. I didn't think it was going to go here, dude. I didn't think we were going to start throwing in dark skin out of nowhere. But uh, it, it's fine. It's okay, bro. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Go off, queen. Uh, you know, fine. Go ahead. Go off. Model, I can only imagine what you'll say about a dark skin, fat, plus size person. I don't like it. Yeah, it's bad. It's all terrible. Because they're dark skin specifically is the reason why. Yeah, I just don't like them. I mean, what am, what am I going to say, dude? Forget about me being a snow bunny. Forget about me only dating black girls in the past and things such and so forth. I don't like it. Get it out of here. You're too dark skinned to be. No, nobody's saying that shit. Nobody's fucking saying that shit. How many racist people do you think are like straight up posting on like TikTok or Instagram? Who's posting in the comment section like, I don't like this shit. She's too dark. I want my I want my Victoria's Secret models to be 220 and white. They gotta have 40% melanin, 80% too much. I can't do it. There's too much melanin. I don't fuck with women that got too much melanin. It, how much hair follicles do you got in your head? I, I I don't like wigs. Like, who's saying that? Nobody is saying that, dude. That's, this is an unrealistic standard, okay? I don't know why we even gotta bring in black women. Like, this is such a pick-me-ass thing to say. Because you're dark skin and you're plus size. What are you trying to... Are you subtly trying to draw the connection between you and Ashley Graham? Is this like your video to try to make it seem like you're in the same caliber as her? Your teeth are yellow. Imagine what you'll say. And I can see where your wig starts. About a dark skin, fat, plus size person. My God. And thankfully, I'm not someone who really gives a- I wonder what the connection is there. Because people said that she's fat, and then you think that they're- Because they said they're fat, like, you're saying that it'd be e just as easy for somebody to say, Oh, yeah, not only is she fat, but this girl is black, too. Ugh. Fuck about what people say. But if you are someone who gives a fuck about what people say, as in, like, it's very hard for you to dismiss that disruptiveness that comes from like constantly being critiqued or constantly being talked about i gotta let you know something if you're in the public eye and you put yourself out on the internet and you want people to look at you and then you're upset that people are looking at you and they're saying something other than what you think is presentable then you're stupid why are you even on the internet if that's the case you do understand that people will say disrespectful stuff about you regardless of whatever you post online some people just blatantly lie some people will just say whatever the fuck they want to say because it's just funny and it's fine because that's what the internet is but you have to understand that that's what you put yourself into. You are on the internet. This is what's going to be. Now, granted, you can sit there and say, I don't want to be called racial slurs and I don't want to be called fat and I don't want to be called this and this and this and this. I get it. I don't want to be called any of that stuff too. There are people on the internet that think that I'm um, straight up gay and homophobic. And also, um, I said, I apparently said racial slurs, which is fine. A lot of people can say whatever the fuck they want to say. But the point I'm making is, like, these are things that are going to happen when you're on the internet, especially if you put yourself out there. It's obvious. If you can't handle the heat, get out the kitchen, right? Do what you got to do to protect your mental health. I'm not even mad at you no more. I'm not, like, I was never really mad because it's your body. Do what you want to do, right? Let's be honest here for a second. This woman is c coping crazily by saying, like, I don't really care what people think. But if you do care about what they think, listen, do whatever you can. I mean, I never really cared. But if you do care, what are you fucking talking about? You uh, Do you care or do you not care? You obviously care because you care enough to post this video telling people to do whatever they can to conserve their mental health. So, like, what are you even talking about, bro? This whole entire video is just you telling everybody how pick me you are while telling everybody that your mental health is severely flawed because you look at comment sections or whatever you probably see things you don't like and then tell people that you're probably eating like i don't know oreo ice cream in the back trying to cope with the fact that people call you fat online right but i'm now what i will say is that no matter what you do no matter what you do there is no level of acceptance that will that will alleviate the pain and the rage and the resentment that you'll feel for changing yourself for the sake of other people there is no amount of acceptance. The only acceptance 
that can actually help you is self-acceptance. And self-acceptance can only come if you are willing to accept yourself where you are right now. Do you love yourself despite not being where you might want to be? Sure. Love yourself. Love yourself now. Love yourself today. True. 100%. Love yourself today. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be looking at yourself with a critical eye and extend, and it, understanding that there might be things about you that are negative. It's perfectly fine to understand, hey, um, I think I'm great. I think I have a great hobbies in my life. I think I have good relationship skills. I think I'm really, really great at my job and things like that. But I spent a little bit too much time playing video games. But I spent a little bit too much time beating off. But I spent a little bit too much time eating this stuff. These things are important to understand because you can change those things if you want to. Now, it's fine if you want to beat off for 13 hours a day when you still work and you still take care of your family. You still do all this stuff, but you still beat off 13 times, 13 hours a day. It's probably not good, but at least you acknowledge it, right? That's the only way, y'all. But otherwise, that's that's all I got to say. You didn't really say much here. You just kind of like try to sit there and cope with the fact that you're feeling severely mentally dis 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 discognitive. Oh, sorry, you're feeling cognitively declined. And you're sitting here telling us that you don't feel that way while telling us you do feel this way while trying to tell us that you are the model within question. At least that's what I'm thinking. I have no idea why you would even bring up that if there was a black uh, plus size model on stage, if uh, you didn't even go anywhere with that. It's almost kind of like you were just trying to put yourself in that place to try to make it seem like you are that that girl. You're not that girl. Let's be honest here for a second. Whatever, bro. Go ahead, man. I love you. Next video. You don't. You, you just this is OK. Whatever. Bye. I also was like convinced. I love you, too that like if you put on a piece of trendy clothing that i would look like the body yeah. that was wearing it and then why would you what really why <laughs> i guess um sure maybe a little bit depending on what you wore if it was like something really big like a suit of armor maybe but if it was something that was tight fitting like I don't know, dude. Like, that'd be like me trying to dress up as Arnold from Terminator 2 and thinking that, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to, like, look just like him. No, I'm not 250. I'm not 250 with a, you know, a ton of muscle and, you know, on the trembolone. So, obviously, I'm not going to look like him. But I understand, but I also don't get it. Then just never liked the way I looked in anything. And so, therefore, you felt like a failure when you put it on. Because yes. the only bodies that you saw in these pieces of clothing were bodies that didn't look like yours. Yes. Okay. Okay. Huh. Beautiful, awesome, fantastic. Who would have known that when somebody looks a certain way and you don't look that certain way and you try to put on the clothes that they wore and you don't look that certain way, you're going to look at that and be discouraged. Who would have known? You're asking multiple different things here. So, But if they are in high demand and scarce, why are they available to thinner people to buy? Why don't plus size people just buy them? Same with bigger secondhand clothes that are bought as oversized. Yeah, um... One thing that these people don't seem to understand is like there's a reason why plus size clothes are not in the stores. It doesn't make any sense that companies wouldn't sell them if they weren't selling. So why would I choose to be less? Why would I choose to make less money if it meant like what am I just going to be? You know, it's like those people that used to think like, you know, like you're, you're like a rich business owner and you're looking at a guy's resume and you're like, oh, wow, Jarquis, Jarquis Jones. What? He what, he's got an MBA. Oh, my God. He, he's he's going to make us four times more money this year in our rep he's only asking for a hundred k a year oh my god this guy's a money printing machine oh he's a black man do you think any company is doing that the only color that these companies care about is green okay and if you're sitting here thinking that they're these companies are not going to be selling plus size clothing if it wasn't lucrative you're fucking retarded that's crazy every company wants to make money so if these plus size clothing were selling they would be on the store shelves but they're not so the reason why they're not in the short store shelves the store shelves is because they're not selling it's obvious i don't know why you don't look at it like that it's it's completely obvious dude so i'm gonna try to look like yours yes okay you're asking multiple different things here so i'm gonna try to hit them seems like it's just one question here just one question why don't they sell explain them all they're in high demand because 70 percent of u.s women are plus size it's not how that works at all that's not how that works at all that is not how that works at all okay let's say who are the people buying the most playstation 5s men right and they're in high demand 
right? We know they're in high demand because they sell out so consistently, right? Same thing with graphics cards, same thing with like that big boom and that big boom at that time, right? Because they were in high demand. Now, only a very particular portion of society was buying those things, okay? Not many even people even know what a graphics card is. Um, not many people want to even buy a PlayStation 5, but the people that do want to buy them, they're, they're willing to buy them. They're willing to go out there and buy one or two or even three. So if you're sitting here and you're saying that because 70% of the population is is fat therefore that that would be the demand that's not how that works at all that's not how supply and demand works just because 70 percent of the population is fat therefore you think the clothes should be there that's not how that works if it was how that works then we would have more clothes in the store but we don't that's not how it works at all that's stupid like <laughs> it's okay whatever bro go ahead man but we only get percent of u.s women are plus size but we only get 20 percent of the fashion market but basically, a very tiny fraction of the market is available for a majority of the population. So that's why I'm saying there is a high demand for- That's not how that works, though. Just because- Okay, it's, it's just what I said, bro. It's like this woman doesn't understand, like, basic economy, like, basic economics. For it, but it is scarce. <laughs> Though that 20% is re represent- my bad. The 70% with the 20% representation in the stores is probably accurate. It's probably accurate based off the amount of people that are buying it. It makes sense. I don't know what to tell you other than that. They would up the supply if there was more demand. If there was no demand, then that seems right. So that is the comparison that I'm making. High population, low availability. So Just because you have a high population doesn't mean that like a certain thing will sell. You do understand that. Yeah, like, it's not. But to another part of your question, then why are thinner people getting the items? Okay, so the particular item that I was talking about in that video is a sweatshirt. It's just a crew neck sweatshirt from a brand called King Size, which is a male brand. They have their own website, but they also sell their product through Amazon. I personally don't know the availability as much of male plus size clothing because that's just not something I research a whole lot on. Um, I have kind of dipped my toe into more like androgynous clothing, um, but not necessarily like the big and tall man's section. So on, I, land, land the hell, land the helicopter, bro. What are we, what are we even doing here? Come on. I don't know the availability of men's plus size clothing as much. Great. You said that like three different ways, but go ahead. But as far as women's plus size clothing, when I go to sites like Old Navy, um, American Eagle, when they used to carry up to a size 24 in jeans. Um, I'm trying to think of other brands that are good examples of this. But like... It doesn't seem like you put a lot of effort into researching if you can only name two brands and one of them doesn't even sell it anymore. Their plus sizes, if you see something that's like cute and trendy, sold out immediately. What you will see left over are items that typically are like cut weird that won't fit plus size people well i'm gonna call something out okay just because something is sold out doesn't mean that they're gonna make more of those things okay um it's, it's like these people just like don't seem to understand like it, it, just because it's sold out that's not a representation of like the demand being high that just might be accurate you know what i'm talking about it's the same thing with like energy consumption here in america like the electricity that comes to your house they they up it during the summertime and then they reduce it like they have to find a good median because they don't want to give you too much and they don't want to give you too little because if you have blackouts or maybe you have like power outages or whatever the fuck so they need to find a healthy median value just because they're sold out doesn't mean they're not going to like restock eventually you know so it's the same thing with like the graphics cards like they were selling out like quick but that doesn't mean they made more demand i think they did eventually but um like it's just like what you're what you're basically saying here is like well they all sell out so why aren't they making more because they don't sell like you think they sell or things that are either very basic or like a weird style that a lot of people are going to be like ooh, i don't know how that's going to look on me and this is something i've talked about before if you want plus size people to buy your items, they need to be good items. We're not just going to take. Can you define what you mean by good items? Like, what does that mean exactly? Because you understand that the clothes are not going to fit on you the same way they're going to fit on somebody else that's thinner or somebody that has a more like, I don't know, uh, profound body. It's going to be different. So when you say good, I'm going to need to know like what that means exactly, because what's good for someone else could be good for me or not good for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like, it's such a ambiguous term. Can you go into like a little bit of nuance on that? Things 
because it's our size and it's available, like we want to spend our money on things we're going to actually wear. Like what? That's why brands like JCPenney, Kohl's, even some Macy's stuff, like they have plus sizes in store. Are they good? No. As far as like thrift stores, secondhand stores, I see a lot of the same thing happening there. Like plus size people tend to hold on to their clothing as long as they can till it's falling apart. Me too. I, I hold on to my clothes until it's falling apart as well. Until it disintegrates off my body, something we have in common. I think most men don't shop, I believe, like clothes and stuff like that. I could be wrong. I think the majority of men that buy their own clothes, it's like a very slim percentage of men. And I think most men get clothes from other people, I'm pretty sure. I do that a lot of a lot. Of I know they do that with like deodorants and stuff like that. That's why if you ever watch like Old Spice commercials or ads or whatever, most of them are catered towards women because most men don't buy their, their own deodorants, which I can 100% profess to. I know a guy that literally made a stick of deodorant last four years. He just didn't wear it every day. He wore it like maybe once a week, if not, if not every other week. So you know, when was the last time you went into a grocery store or like a regular store and you saw a man in the deodorant section at all? It doesn't happen. You don't see guys in those aisles, bro. These guys are literally looking around like they have no idea what to do. They'll just take whatever they can get from whoever's in their life that's a woman. So it could be their mom or it could be their grandma or it could be their 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 girlfriend or their wife or their sister. Uh, most of these people are buying it for them. Now, I'm not saying men can't buy their own, deodor their own deodorant. They can. But you know what I'm talking about. Like Most men get their grooming products from women. They're w the women in their lives. It's really sad, but it is what it is. Most men don't shop for their shit and if they do shop for this stuff they're buying very particular items a lot of times with my like star wars toys stuff um i actually recently just got rid of a lot of my stuff which is one of the first times i have done that in my life <laughs> like gotten rid of things that i have like very gently worn because such a weird way of <laughs> very gently worn is crazy because should have should have donated that right because it's like so many fat people just don't have any clothes they're like did you donate them? Did you like give them out? Did you give them away? Or you know, it seems like you're to hope you didn't throw them away, right? Because you always complain that there's not enough. So. There is such a like scarcity mindset. Like, what if I need that at one point and I can't find something like that ever again in my size? So we will wear it until stuff like falls apart. That's why you won't see a lot of plus size items in thrift stores. Or if you do see that stuff, it's things that are like super outdated, super old, things that like people wouldn't typically typically gravitate towards okay well the point of the the point of the question was like hey um how come when we do see these things in stores they don't sell and how come fat people don't buy them and you have yet to like talk about that so can you please go into that because it's stuff that somebody wore in like the 80s that they're just getting rid of now people in the 80s were not as big as they are today come on stop lying um so that is kind of the best I can hit all of those points. You didn't even go over any of the points at all. You didn't even touch on anything. In one video and not make it super long. I think it didn't even go over anything. It's li that was literally just a useless video, but okay. It's so funny that like the very small amount of time that men send fat phobic comments, um, not on an anonymous profile. It's like the absolute skinniest man you've ever seen, just emaciated. Just six foot four, 92 pounds soaking wet, going, go to the gym, you fat bitch. You first. Damn. You first. Uh, she kind of got a point a little bit. I, I can kind of see where she's going with that a little bit. Um, it's, you know, it's valid. It's valid, dude. A lot of these dudes do be projecting their own insecurities onto the internet. I'll give her that one. First, eat a salad. Eat a steak. True, bro. Eat a lot of food to ensure that you get a lot of weight. If you're six foot four and you weigh 92 pounds, you don't weigh enough. Tiny, go to the gym. But that doesn't excuse you from not going to the gym or losing weight or eating things that are less calories. Like, you don't have to eat a salad necessarily, but maybe something that's a little lower calorie. We should both go. True. Like, what do you mean? Do you want to get a dual membership? Yeah, let's go together, dude. That's how we're going to bond, dude. Me skinny, you big. Let's get in the middle together, dude. This sounds like a bonding experience, man. Hold up, bro. Kind of sound like she's inviting a few guys, bro. Maybe somebody's a lucky candidate. Do you want to go together? Yes. Can we hold each other accountable? Can we like hold each other's hands? Who knows? Maybe we can get a little bit of something spicy going on in the gym, bro. Who knows? What do you mean? Like talking shit to me with your petite feminine frame. <laughs> oh, hold up now. She kind of sound like she talking to me, bro. Hold up, bro. Kind of sound like she want a little bit of date. Uh, is she is she trying to like, are you trying to talk to me real quick, bro? I don't even know necessarily I would take any. If you're sitting here saying that I have a petite feminine frame, 
I don't know. It's not too bad. That's not even that bad of a comment, dude. It sounds like she's looking for a date. It sounds like she's looking for a potential candidate right now. It sounds like she kind of complimented me. I don't know. I don't even... I took no offense to that. Let's go to the gym together, hold hands, and you're going to tell me I'm petite? <laughs> okay. That sounds good to me. I don't know. It didn't sound that bad. Anyway, guys, we're going to end the video here. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody can like the video, comment on the video, subscribe to all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. Thank you, everybody that watched today's video. If you watched today's video in its entirety, leave it down below by typing in petite because I'm petite. I'm petite. I'm okay with that. I'm okay. A lot of people sit there and they go, David, you're a femboy. David, you're you're an e-boy. Listen, I'm not an e-boy. I'm not a femboy, okay? I do got a big meat, but that's besides the point. You know, that's this normality for people like me. People like me as in the sense of like big meat individuals. But anyway, you're beautiful. You're amazing. You're spectacular. I love the way your hands are petite. Those are so nice. So delicate. I love the way your knuckles look upon your fingers. Wow. Those are so nice. Can I look upon them? <gasps> oh, sorry. It's like uh, all my all the blood just evaporated from my head or whatever. But can I can I compliment you really quickly on your amazing bone structure? Uh, by the way, you kind of giving me great bone structure right now, if you know what I'm talking about. And uh, you look very great today. You look very beautiful. You kind of look. You kind of remind me of I don't know. Like I would say like a peppermint patty. Very nice. Very very spicy. Mm, kind of makes my mouth feel a little bit minty, and I like that. But anyway. Socials will be listed down below in the description. Uh, if you want to check them all out, you can. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. 